there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With even more exclusive content, with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free, personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. So when Alpine Electronics dropped the news that they were coming back with their ultra premium setup, of course, I'm talking about the F number one status system. I mean, everybody was freaking out. And now more recently, some of that DNA has trickled down because Alpine just launched a brand new series called Status. And within that status line, we find a brand new DSP integrated amplifier and a new software interface to boot. Today, we've got Dan Greenwood from Alpine in the studio with us today. We're gonna break it down in this workshop and it's gonna be a good one. So don't you dare go away. This is CMA Workshop Alpine and it starts now. Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in to the CMA Workshop presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Alpine is on the menu today, hot off the press with a brand new line of premium components called Status. And as I mentioned in our little preamble there, they've got a 12 channel, a multi-channel, a big amplifier built in with DSP and a brand new interface to boot. Now, for those that don't know, Alpine's actually been in the DSP business for quite some time. We're gonna get a little bit of background on that. But what we're here to talk about today is for you guys to learn all about this brand new Status DSP. And to do so, well, we've got a special guest coming in. He's he's really literally a brand specialist for Alpine. Apparently, he's the DSP guru over there, and I'm pretty sure he is. We're going to have him in the studio right now. His name is Dan Greenwood. Hello. Hey, Dan. How are you today, sir? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm pretty darn excited. We're talking about DSP first and foremost, but we're talking about brand new DSP from the Alpine camp. I mean, I remember I interviewed Eric. Uh, from the show at KFES where you guys dropped that news. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously there was a lot of excitement in the air. It's a whole line and I know we're gonna go through that, but really is a, a, a premium line, ultra high res audio. And it's not just about the components, but also a software that goes along with it. Can you tell us a little bit about the feedback and the reaction you've had from this launch? Yeah, it's been very exciting. So uh, earlier in the year when we relaunched F number one status, uh, a lot of excitement uh, came from that, but uh, one thing about F number one status is it's a full contained system. It is one SKU. It is its own system. And it's not the cheapest thing in the world. It's not for everybody. Not everyone can afford it. So that's where status comes in. So just like you said before, a lot of the technology we came up with with F number one status has trickled down through the line. And that gave us status, which if you look at the pictures and you look at all the equipment, it looks very, very similar to F number one status, but at a price that's much more affordable. Plus, you can build up your own system and configure it any way you want. So we're very excited about it. I'm not gonna lie, I remember talking to Eric and just looking at the aesthetics, right? The 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 tooling and the the type of materials used. If you flash that image in front of me real quick, I was like, what did F one status? you know, just add more components, but it's not so. It's at a much more affordable price range. And this is a new departure because I, I as I mentioned, Alpine already had uh, a couple units in DSP. And I think you're gonna yeah. cover that today, but this is a new departure as far as the software is concerned, correct? Yes, it is. Uh, so uh, a few years back, uh, we launched a new DSP called the A50S and it had its own software and it was really good. It's real simple to use. And then we kind of revamped it a couple of years ago with the A50X. And we also launched the X09. We're going to talk about both of those here in a little bit. Um, both of those kind of came up with a new face in the DSP and kind of a new design aesthetic. And the uh, Status DSP has what I think is the best version of, of everything because it's real simple, real easy to use, real nice GUI. 
Um, you, you know, we're going to walk through it today, but uh, it's kind of the evolution of what we've kind of learned and developed from our previous DSPs. Well, I've had the privy to um, get a sneak peek of this new software, and I got to say, from an aesthetic standpoint, my God, this is probably the prettiest software I've seen today. And I've trust me, you know, I've seen a lot of software interfaces yeah. and GUIs. This one is absolutely yeah. up there as far as aesthetic and just um, you know graphical interface. So I'm really yeah. excited for you guys to teach uh, for you to teach the dealers that today. Um, and you mentioned we're going to cover uh, a couple of the products. Can you give us an overview of what we're going to experience today? Yeah, so uh, we're gonna focus on DSP. So we're gonna talk about three main uh, DSPs. We're gonna focus. We're gonna most of that emphasis is gonna be on the status DSP, um, but we're gonna kind of refresh our 850X as well as our X09, which are our other two standalone DSPs. And are you gonna actually walk through the software with us today? With the, the status DSP, yes. Awesome, awesome. So, guys, if you're tuning in now, this is it. We're going to give Dan the stage. He's going to run through a couple of the products so you know what the offering is, right, as far as DSP goes for Alpine. And then yep. uh, he's got the helm. He's going to put on the screen. And you're going to see exactly what this new status DSP software is all about. On that cool. note, Dan, um, take it away. Cool. Uh, so are we starting with the DSP yeah, software? Let's start, let's start actually with the presentation first. Why don't we do the presentation and then we'll get into the software. How's that? Okay. So let's go ahead, put up the presentation and away we go. Perfect. Excellent. All righty then. So uh, just like I mentioned before, we do have a few standalone DSPs and one that we've had for a little while now is the PXE 0850X. I just call it the 850X. Uh, it's a lot shorter today. And this DSP comes with some pretty cool features that are very unique. First off, it is a 12-channel DSP. Um, it has six-channel low-level and high-level inputs, as well as digital, so optical, coax, and it does have a built-in Bluetooth receiver. Um, that one thing, and I'll skip down to the bottom there, but the little controller is actually included. So some guys have actually used this as a standalone unit without a source, and like in a classic car, and they can just have the controller mounted, and these guys stream off their phone to the Bluetooth right into the DSP. It's a really cool feature for that. Um, another really interesting, uh, unique feature is the uh, outputs. There's 12 channel low level, so you can run into your external amplifiers and build up whatever kind of system you want to do. But there's also an eight channel amplifier built in. Now it's not going to be the strongest amp in the world. It's, it's a basic chipset amp. It's kind of like the power of a, of, a, of a head unit, but it is rated at 25 watts by eight at four ohm. You cannot run it any lower than that. Um, and it will not bridge, but I look at those outputs as kind of a solution if you need it. For example, let's say you're doing a system that you're running an active two-way front stage with a subwoofer and you're only adding a five-channel amp, um, but the customer wants to have rear speakers still playing, you can use two of the onboard amplifier channels on the DSP just to run those and you don't have to add an extra amplifier. So it's, it's a pretty cool solution for something like that. Um, some guys have used two of the channel uh, channels that run tweeters active, just uh, as long as they don't need too much power. So it's very flexible. Um, and of course, uh, just like all the uh, DSPs, uh, they all have a 31 band parametric EQ that, or graphic, and that is per output. Um, so you can really, really dial your tuning in. Um, and also there's a smartphone app for uh, both iOS and Android um, on both this DSP and the X09. So you can use an, a phone to do all your tuning, or you can use the PC software, whichever you're more comfortable with. So moving up to the X09, this guy is a, pretty unique. So the, the A50 is a 12 channel DSP. This one is a 16 channel, and it has 16 inputs and outputs. And all, all those inputs can be high or low, or you can mix and match. Uh, the uh, it is not a built-in amp, so it's only low-level outputs, but uh, it does have the optical digital uh, coax as well as Bluetooth. The Bluetooth uh, receiver and controller, just like on the A50X, is also included with this unit. Um, some uh, extra features you're going to gain here is uh, it is high-res audio certified, so it is a 24-bit 96K sampling rate DSP, um, so it does not do any down conversion, or at least down to 96K. Uh, you're going to still have your 31 band parametric or graphic output EQ, but you're also going to have a 10 band parametric or graphic input EQ per channel. 
So, and uh, you can, if you to do any kind of correction on the input source from a factory system, you can do that here. Um, you can even apply crossovers, high pass, low, and, and or low pass, as well as phase adjustment, all that, um, as long as it's zero or 180 degree on each input. Uh, and then the other thing that's really cool is it has a built-in signal generator. Uh, and uh, I can actually show you something similar in the next DSP in the software, because it also has it. But uh, if you want to use the DSP to generate pink noise or or uh, a sine wave or anything like that for say, amp gain adjustment, anything like that, you can actually do that right in the software. So you don't even have to like get a, your USB drive out or find a, your old audio sound disc and get that going to find whatever track you need to set up gains. You can actually just set that right off the DSP. It's pretty cool. And then we're going to go right to the main star for the day. This is the HDP D90. So this is our new status DSP. And first thing you're going to notice is it looks a lot like F1 status. And that's because we modeled it just after the F1 status DSP. Uh, you're going to have a very, very unique suite of features here. So it's going to have a two channel RCA input. So it's meant for if you run like a, an aftermarket radio, like one of our new uh, Halo units, uh, you can just run that in that way or whatever you want to do. But you're also going to have a 12 channel high level input. So for OEM integration and um, getting whatever kind of signal you need from factory systems, uh, should be plenty of channels to get whatever kind of signal you need. Of course, you're also going to have optical, di uh, digital coax, as well as Bluetooth, just like all the other DSPs. Um, Outputs, you're going to have 10 channels of RCA, and we're going to get a closer look at that on the next slide, as well as 12 channel high level. And by high level, I mean it's also an amplifier. So we're going to have staggered power in this, and this is a true amplifier, it's not a chipset amp. So you're going to have 50 watts by 8 and 80 watts by 4. And um, we'll show you some system configuration ideas what you can do with that. But what's really cool is you have four little more powerful channels, so if you run, I would recommend running those like mid-bass drivers because they always like to have a little more power. Um, another cool little trick is the 80 watt channels are bridgeable. So if you're a guy like me and you like to have as much mid-bass as possible, and you don't care too much about rear speakers, you can bridge those two channels and run them on your front mid-bass drivers and get as much power as possible out of this. So pretty cool. Uh, I, I know I kind of grazed over the matrix summing um, on the other too, but all three DSP are very similar with the matrix uh, summing, and we'll, I'll show you that on the software. Um, and just like the X09, this is also a high res uh, certified DSP, but this one is sampled at 90, 192K uh, instead of 96. And that is how this whole, the whole status system is uh, built around high res. So, and to give you a perspective, uh, F number one status is there are what we call studio spec high res. So that is 32 bit, 384 K sampling rate, which is the first ever done in car. Um, no one has ever come anywhere near that high in resolution. Uh, what we've considered a standard for really good high res for a while now is the 24 bit 192 K standard. And that's exactly where status fits in. And that, there's a lot of music in that, in that bit rate as well. So um, you're pretty future proof on, Anyone who's wanting to use any kind of high res music, this this DSP is perfect for it. Uh, so, one other thing I want to point out: so on the other two DSPs, uh, I put a little stat in there about the signal to noise ratio being 100 dB, which is really good. Status is 110 dB signal to noise ratio with 0.001% THD, and that is pretty awesome. Uh, what that means for those of you who do not understand it, the most basic way I can explain it is it's going to have a very, very low noise floor, uh, probably inaudible. And I can tell you from my experience, uh, I have never heard a noise floor in this amp. If you crank it all the way up and have a zero bit track playing, which has the silence, you don't hear any static or background hiss. It's just very, very quiet. Um, for reference, if you guys are curious, the F number one status, uh, amps and DSP are 115 dB signal noise ratio. So we're pretty close to F number one status on that. So some of that stuff that we created with the technology and the power supply and the filtering has come into the status line. And that's why you're going to have such a real low noise floor in a very dynamic range. So, um, now the control is not included on this one because it's optional and I'll give you guys a little, uh, extra little piece of info. I don't have a slide here, but we have our status head unit coming. 
that'll be launching around the same time as this DSP. And that head unit can actually plug in directly to this and give you some basic control of the DSP. So you actually don't, if you have that head unit with this DSP, you don't have to have a separate controller. It'll, it'll be all on one unit. Cool. So let's go forward and here's a, some shots of the sides for those of you little more tech nerds like me. Uh, so to, like, if, if you look at the bottom uh, image here, it looks just like any other amplifier. Um, you have your 12 outputs and as you can see on the right side, uh, those are the 80 watt channels. Those are bridgeable. Um, now when you bridge them, you don't want to run them the load, combined load below 4 ohm, just, to, just for reference. Now the 50 watt channels are not bridgeable. Uh, just like the uh, the A50X, uh, so just keep that in mind. Now on the top here, you're going to see your output channels. Uh, there are, are 10 outputs. Now total, this is a 14 channel DSP. So channels 13 and 14 are dedicated to just being a pre-out. So normally that would be just used for your subwoofer. Um, and you'll see that the outputs uh, one through four, and then nine through uh, nine through 12 are mirrored on the outputs as well as the uh, powered outputs. So um, so five, excuse me, five through eight are uh, gonna be powered off the amplifier only. So just keep that in mind for when a kind of system configuration you come up with. So like if you wanna run external amps for the fronts and you are gonna do rears, but you don't need too much power or maybe just the tweeters, you wanna run off of it, I would just plan it to where you can have those, those 50 watt channels powering it. But quite honestly, you can run the status speakers and everything run perfectly fine off of this head unit. Um, we do have a couple of demo vehicles now with with this system powered off of the head, powered all off of this DSP, and it's pretty awesome. For those of you who were in Orlando, we did have the Tundra there that had this system going. So, uh, and then of course you'll see here we have our digital inputs, uh, the a large Ethernet looking jack here. That is actually for the Bluetooth module. And um, the controller port's a little different than our other DSPs, but it does come with an adapter. So, and we're talking about system configuration options here. So, uh, this is uh, uh, just uh, showing that you can run a full active system with three way fronts and two way rears. You can actually run three way rears also because there are 12 channels. Um, and uh, all of this would be uh, just controlled and powered right off of the DSP. And then you just, whatever sub configuration you want to do, you can just add that to it. And um, what's really cool about this DSP is the flexibility. And we're going to go deeper into that here in a little bit, but you have so many options of what you can use as your source and how, and how you can utilize that. So you can use what, this is the controller for our status head unit, uh, the 990. Uh, and you can have that as a source, or of course you can have a, your factory system. You can have a combination of the two, and we'll talk more about that here in a second. And of course, you can also just have your aftermarket head unit. So it's very flexible with how you can set it up. You don't have to think of this thing as only being one self-contained system. Um, it's you can I call it the Swiss Army Knife DSP. You can do whatever you want with it. It's pretty awesome. So uh, with that being said, that actually takes us right into talking about the software. So whenever you guys are ready, we'll switch over to that screen and uh, we'll. We'll go uh, take a closer look at it. Perfect. So uh, this is the software, and this is what you'll see when you first boot it up. Now, what's uh, first thing I want to show you guys is it is all resizable. So for those of you who uh, use some DSP software that is in a fixed size window and it's really small on a laptop screen and it's hard to see, with our software you can blow it up like this and you can do the same thing on the X09 and the 850X as well. So um, that's why you're going to see all these icons kind of spaced out. But uh, just kind of giving a quick look at this, what we call our home screen. This is what you, would be your main source input and this is what's called a mix source. Now this is probably one of my favorite features of this DSP and uh, what's really cool is features also included on our other two DSPs. This one's a little bit easier to use because it's all on this screen. But what you what you do here is you say, what do you want to be your main source? So let's say you're using a factory amplifier as your to the high level input, and you want that to be what's playing through as your main source. But let's say you also have a status head unit, and you're going to run that with a digital output, and you want that to be your secondary source. 
So we'll select that as a mix source. And what that's gonna do is whenever this source sees any kind of signal, it'll automatically switch over. So you don't have to go and uh, cycle through sources or change anything on a controller. You, it'll just automatically play. Uh, now let's think about some other options here. Let's say you're gonna do it the other way around. Let's say your status head unit is gonna be your main source, right? But you want your factory system to still be there as a secondary because you need it for maybe Bluetooth hands-free calling. Maybe you have um, navigation alerts or parking sensors that come through the system and you want those to come through. Let's say, so we can actually have that as your mix source and whenever you get a phone call, it'll actually override your this input. You can even have it attenuate at a certain level. So let's say you only wanted to play 35% of the volume of this source whenever this one's playing you can do that and you can just select whatever you want so pretty cool so i'm going to leave it back to where this way and and then right down here there's just your preset so you can uh call or save them which uh and then you can of course label them uh whatever you want so um right here at the top is your master volume as well as the temperature sensor now i'm not connected to one right now the only thing that would look different is this would be green and you can actually use that to connect and disconnect whenever you're plugged in. Um, there's no synchronization time or anything. Right when you plug in the USB cable, it, within a second, it's already synchronized and you're set to go. It's really quick. So uh, now let's move over to the next tab. Input. Input's pretty. Input is going. You're going to see all your channels of input right here, as well as that 10 band parametric EQ that we talked about before as well as you can apply crossovers to your inputs. You can adjust your gain and your phase um, all right here. So uh, so uh, one thing we're gonna do is you'll see right here on the side that it's already got a kind of a default configuration. So it's assuming that like you have front tweeters on channels one and two and so on. Let's say that this is not the system that you have hooked up. And, but you, and you want to change it, you can actually select each one and say, no, I'm actually running a front full range input here. Now, instead of running through all, all of those and doing it all one by one, you click input type. And this has built in configurations of a lot of different systems. And you can look through here and say, and see if any of these make sense to you or are the system that you have, uh, the factory system that you have in the vehicle that you're working on. So let's say, you have a car that has front highs, front lows, full range rears, and a sub. So this system right here. Let's let's select that. Now, if you don't see your system, then you just go through and you can figure it manually. But this, when you select this, you'll see that it'll actually auto fill all that in for you, and you're already ready to go. Um, we're gonna jump forward a second here over to output. For output type, it's the same thing. So you'll see, you'll label whatever channels you have on your output. You can also select it here. Now, let's say you're doing something like this right here, a three-way front with rears and a sub. But let's say you wanna run active rears and you don't quite see that here because we're not gonna run a center channel. We can go ahead and make one ourselves. So we'll hit custom and we're gonna say, hey, how many channels of output do you wanna use? Let's just leave it all on, we'll leave it on 14. And you'll see that they're all now nullified. So now you can go through and select what you want. So, and the reason why we're doing this is because, I'm sorry, I know I'm jumping around a lot here. Your input mixer is not quite set up yet. See how, I know it looks kind of daunting because there's a lot of channels here, but, when there, but uh, we're gonna look back at this in a second, so. Let's set up our channels. So we, we're running, a, let's say we're running a three-way active front and a two-way active rear and a sub. So, um, and we're gonna use all the power on board, uh, except for the subwoofer. We'll run an external amp for the sub. So we'll let channels one and two run our tweeters. We'll let three and four run our front mids. Now we're gonna have more power on mid base drivers. So we're gonna let nine and 10 run our front woofers. And you'll see that already applies left and right. And then we'll go back up to channel five, that'll be our rear tweeters. And we're actually not gonna use seven and eight because we don't need them. And then we're gonna let 11 and 12 run our rear 
woofers. And then we're going to have 13 and 14, which are pre-outs. We'll have them run subwoofer. Cool. Now, if you want a bridge, this is where you would actually just select this right here, and then it would gray out the right channel, and then you just uh, sell it that. You could just do like front left woofer and then front right woofer. Um, so now we did all that, and you'll see it already applied some basic crossovers and everything, but we take a look at our mixer. Now we're going to see that it actually already pre-configured our mixer for us because it already knows that we have what kind of signal we have going in. Now you can go and adjust this uh, if you need to, but this should get you started and get you going because um, it already knows what your outputs are set at, set to and everything. So this could be a huge time saver. So that's why I, I always start by setting up your inputs and then your outputs so, so you... Uh, so it so you don't have to really mess with the mixer much and it really can save you a lot of time so at this point you're already set up it's already playing music you're ready to go now now you can just go and set your crossovers uh now let's say you want to mess with something on the input um you can you select your channel you can take your uh and we'll, we'll mess with the eq on the outputs but uh you can adjust your eq here now let's say you have some kind of weird thing happening on a tweeter channel where there's a low frequency and all that and you just want to cut that off you can actually do a uh, a high pass on it or a low pass whatever you want to do you can actually apply those um right on the tweeter input so as you can see it'll actually give you a visual of what you're doing um and of course you can adjust whatever kind of input level you have and everything uh per channel so all this is going to look very similar to the output side so let's take a look here so now you're going to have 31 bands of, uh, of uh, EQ, and this is per, like I said before, it's per channel. Uh, so, uh, and, it is all, and it is set to be parametric. Now, if you are wanting to go graphic, because parametric is a little daunting to you, you can just select the graphic EQ mode. It'll say, are you, ask me if you're sure. You say yes. And what that's going to do is pretty much allow you, it's pretty much just going to keep your, gain, your frequencies fixed. At a, at a certain dead at a third octave and you'll just be able to adjust that only as you, now you can still adjust that when you adjust the cue then now we're, we're pretty much adding a parametric to it but let's reset that i'm going to leave it in parametric and when you're in parametric you can of course and i'm just clicking and dragging you can adjust every band to any frequency you want and it's in one hertz increments so you can Technically, if you wanted to, you can have all 31 bands on your tweeter. Don't do that. That's a lot of work, and it's not worth it. But if you want to do it, you can. Uh, one thing that is really cool while you're tuning is this little uh, blue dot here. It lights up blue whenever you've adjusted that band. If you want to hear with and without without moving it, you can actually just click, and it'll immediately bring it back and forth. So... Um, so if you're, you know, during fine tune listening, if you are just trying to isolate a frequency that's bugging you, you can do that. Um, you know, you also see these little squares here. You can, that's how you can adjust your cue and, it, and it's all done in real time. You'll hear this happen in real time. There's no pauses or blips in the sound. Um, so you can really, really narrow it down if you want. Now, if you're like me and you like to go through and use the arrow keys on your keyboard, of course you can do that as well. Um, so you can go left and right, up and down, and this it's going to adjust what frequency or band you're adjusting, and then your gain of that band. Now, if you want to adjust the cue, you can click on the cue and move and use your arrow keys and get it really fine tuned in, or you can actually punch in a number. Let's see, five. Let's see, and then it'll it'll put that in for you. Um, you can do the same on frequency. Like, let's say I want to adjust eleven thousand two hundred eighty-seven then you can do that. So you can just punch it in and really, really dial stuff in here. And of course you have the same option on, uh, on your crossover. So you'll have link with Riley, Butterworth and Bessel as your options here. And they're going to go from 60 B all the way down to 48. And, uh, so whatever slope you want to, uh, you want to use or whatever you, it, you should be covered. And of course your frequencies, uh, by using the arrows, they're going to give you big jumps so you can get pretty close. But you can also type in, let's say I want my frequency, I want it to be 5,237. You can do that. You can do whatever frequency at 
within 100 increments that you want. And that's every output and every channel can do this. And if you want to turn off your high pass, it's just a simple little toggle right here. Uh, something else that's really cool is you're going to have your basic 180 and zero degree phase adjustment right down here. You just click that. But let's say you want to do a phase adjustment by degree, you can actually use this slider instead. And it's all one degree increments all the way up to 360. And that's also going to be per channel. Uh, let's see, what else am I missing here? Yeah, that's pretty much it for this channel. Oh, uh, my favorite feature is, all right, I'll show you guys right now, is this little box right here. It looks like a link, a chain. And that is our link channel linking. So let's say when you're tuning the vehicle, you got your right side done, you got your EQ set, you're happy with it. You got your left side done, you're happy with it. You put them both together and you're starting to, and you're seeing that your, your EQ curve on your RTA is not quite what you want and you want to adjust a couple frequencies like uh, uh, together. You can say, you can put, for example, the two tweeters on a link. And if you want to see what's linking, you actually go to option and look at output link settings and you can check what is linked. So you can, uh, you can adjust the, the phase together, the EQ, the crossover, the volume, or any combination of. Uh, so right now we're on EQ and, uh, I'm sorry, what was it? It was EQ channel volume and crossover. So, uh, let's adjust that. Let's just make something really weird looking, right? So. We have this, and that's on channels one. And now you'll notice when I go to channel one, it actually applied the difference. It doesn't override. So what's cool is, let's say you're set, you're like, oh man, 6300 is really hot on these two tweeters playing together. Let's just lower that down. It'll actually lower it between the two. So you can you don't have to go between both EQs. You can now just link them. And you're if you're happy with it and you're like, cool, I want to leave that alone, you can cancel that link. And as you can see, you could do up to eight different links. So you can you can adjust EQ together, channel level together. You can try flipping tweeters out of face to, at the same time if you want, whatever you want to do. And um that actually takes us right to a time correction screen, which also has uh what we call delay groups. Those are just like linking. So let's say you have all your delays set and you, and you want to try to get the subwoofer to walk forward. You can actually put all your speakers on a delay group and delay them and then, but leave your subwoofer alone. So, um, and of course you have different ways of doing this. So like you can just use your slider and right here, it's going to show you millisecond is in centimeter. Um, if you want to punch in the number you can, so like, let's say it's 2.5 millisecond or whatever, you can just punch that in. Um, of course, you can do your, if you're someone who likes to use inches or centimeters, you have that option to you as well. Um, and then, of course, you have your delay group. So, like, just showing you guys some delay groups here. I'm just going to put in some crazy delays. And I'll put them all in the same group. Now, whenever you adjust any one of these, you'll see all of them adjust together. And it's only going to apply the difference. So, it won't override what you've already done. And when you're done, you just cancel out of that group. Now you can select it by here, or as you saw here on the channel um, graph, it'll highlight what speaker you're selected. If you want to mute a channel, you just click on the speaker. So you don't have to go back to the other screen to mute a channel to adjust delay. Uh, if you're doing an adjustment by ear, you, it's all, all done on this screen. And of course you still have your master volume right here at the top. So pretty well thought out because you don't have to keep going back and forth between tabs. And then um, we already kind of looked at the mixer, but as you if you guys have messed with any kind of input mixer on any other DSP, um, ours is going to be pretty similar. It's just going to choose what percentage of signal you want to come from and what input to what output. Um, so yeah, you have your outputs across the bottom and your inputs over here on the, on the left, and you just kind of go through and set it up. Now you're also going to see this box up here. It says passive and active. This will actually, if you select this, it'll automatically put forward uh you'll see it's more if if you're running like more of a um it'll just it's going to take like all your lefts and put them out to the lefts and rights out to rights uh passive is just going to kind of go off of what we did before with that uh input configuration and output configuration so um just always double check this and make sure it's doing what you want 
And then if, let's say if you're doing some summing off a factory system and you're playing pink noise through the factory radio and you want to make sure that you have full range on an, on or what kind of output you have, you click this little RTA tab right here and it will actually show you an RTA graph of whatever channel you have selected. So let's say you have like you're running full range rear and you just want to make sure you have full range. You just select whatever rear it is. For example, we're not using channel seven and eight right now, right? So let's just make seven a rear full range. Let's just set that up, even though they're not going anywhere. We can actually now go over here, select channel seven or eight, and look at our signal and make sure that we have full range. And if and you can actually, oops, sorry, you can actually move it off to the side and adjust your uh, um, levels and and everything in your mixer and sure that uh you, you have whatever signal you need so um and that's now the keep in mind this rta is only going to look at your signal on the output side of the dsp it's not going to do an acoustic measurement but this can save you from having to like bust out another rta and plug it into an output just to see what kind of signal you're dealing with all you have to do is just click a tap click a button it's all right there um what else can i show you guys uh Okay, so the other thing that's going to kind of be related there is signal generator. So now, uh, if you, let's say you want to set some amp gains you know, or anything like that, or you want to generate some no a pink noise, you can also do that on, on the DSP. And this will just come out of whatever output you select. So um, by default, it'll play through all, but let's say I only want pink noise played through the tweeters, then you can mute all your other channels and just play it through those. Um, and to say, yeah, I want pink noise, I want it at whatever volume, and you're good. Now, if you want a sine wave, you just click that. You can say whatever sine wave you want, like even if you want a, a, an overlap, like a 3 dB overlap, there you go. You have it right here, select your frequency, output it to your amplifier, get your scope hooked up, and then you can set your gains. Um, you don't have to find a track or play anything else, it's all right here. Um, you can even play a half clip sine wave. So you want to check your signal polarity. You can actually do that from onboard as well. Um, pretty cool feature and that's something, a little trick you guys can do. Let's say you're trying to find a rattle in a door. Let's say, let's say channel five is, or actually, uh, let's say channel nine is playing the front driver door woofer and there's some rattle in there and you're trying to find it. You can actually now play a frequency out of that channel and adjust the level and then just and uh, see if you can isolate that rattle down. That's a little trick you can do and you can do that with any output. So it's pretty cool there. Uh, both of those features, the same signal generator as well as the RTA, those are also built into the X09. Actually, everything I've shown you that this DSP can do, the X09 does something very similar. So just for reference. Um, other than that, guys, that's all I can uh, think of to show you, uh, Ben, do you have any questions? Uh, uh, what kind of question? Of course I have questions. This, <laughs> of course I do. But thank you for taking the time to go through all the all the great features. Um, you know, I, I said in the beginning of the show, you know, the graphical interface of this software is so pleasing. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm not knocking any other software out there. Don't get me wrong. I'm just I want to give credit where credit is due, like whoever is responsible for, you know, there's the programming side of things, right? The actual function, but the form is really nice. And I, I think yeah. that, that whoever, you know, is responsible for that needs to be credited for that. And I wanted to say that. So I know it has nothing to do with the sound or nothing, anything to do with anything yeah. else, but hey, it's part of yeah. it. Um, well, you the mentioned- software, Well, I'm sorry, oh. the software is really important. You know, if uh, that's where, that's all of your interfacing with the DSP is in the software. So if it's hard to use or not pleasing, it's gonna make your experience a lot less enjoyable, so. I, I can kind of draw yeah. the parallel with, you know, playing music and uh, instruments and a guitar, for example, you know, when you have a guitar that looks that good and inspires you to play with, then you're gonna play with it more. And this yeah. is kind of that parallel that I, want, I wanted to kind of mention. Um, you, you mentioned your favorite uh, feature. Could you elaborate yeah. on that feature a little bit and giving a, a more of an example of what why that is such a yeah. great feature for you? So a lot of it's going to be whenever uh, during the tuning process. So the channel linking, um, for those of you who don't remember, that's my favorite feature. Um, yeah, that's when you link the channel yeah. so that when you do the when you do yeah. a change uh, on one channel, the other one applies mm -hmm. as well. But the important yeah. fact is that it's above and beyond what was already set. 
Yes, Correct. it applies the difference. So, the difference. so yeah. some, yeah. So sometimes um, I've seen it before on channel linking where, let's say you you're on a left side and you channel uh, link it to a right side, it'll override the whole right side. It'll match it to the left, and it just undid everything you just did. This one doesn't do that, uh, and um, and it's also pretty common. A lot of other DSPs do have that feature, and it's a great feature, and I think everyone should have it. Um, it just depends on how easy is it to use, uh, Ben. Um, so it'll also save a lot of time in the fine tuning process. So like, for example, I said, you know, if you want to adjust, you have a frequency that's really p uh, spiking up on you on the RTA when you combine both sides of the car, you can now just a few clicks and adjust it all together. You don't have to go to left and adjust 3 dB and then right and adjust 3 dB and try to match both mm -hmm. sides the way you were doing. You can just make sure you're just doing it all one shot. Link. It's pretty easy to use. Link. Yeah. Yep, Hashtag link. link, remember the link. Uh, <laughs> I should, going back to the graphical interface, um, not only yeah. on main screen, but you know when you mm -hmm. showed the different options of different system builds, and those are all graphical as well. So it's like you don't have to read the fine print saying, oh, tweet. you can see it, right? Oh, that's yeah. a three-way in the front, two-way in the back with two subs or either or. Also, yep. again, some extra effort put in from the software developers to kind of make that visual experience uh, throughout, not only on the main screen, but even when you're selecting you know, different systems. And honestly, there were so many on there. Like, unless you have something really crazy, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure you're going to find the system you're building on that menu right there. Yep, um, yep. The last thing that I wanted to mention I thought was kind of nifty was how many ways you can go ahead and adjust your uh, EQ, whether it's parametric or, or regular, um, either by left arrow, right arrow, uh, highlighting the actual value or dragging the dot. I'll call it the dot for lack of technical yeah. term. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and you know, putting it anywhere you want per channel. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of software out there are limit you to the way that you adjust those um, those settings, which forces you to do a heck of a lot of clicking back and forth on these minuscule, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, this, oh yeah, yeah. this gives you that option to do it whichever you're comfortable with, whether it's graphical, yeah. mm -hmm. numeric, or if you just want a left, right thing. So I, I just yeah. want to make mention of that. I'm, I'm going to give you know. another option here. If you have a touch screen, you can use that no, too. No way. Yeah, yeah. OK, did not know that. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so, on the mouse and the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Interesting, yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. um you can you up. can click and drag and, and do all right. that right on the screen yeah oh. there you have it folks we've mm -hmm. discovered something right there that he didn't show okay mm -hmm. uh let's let's back out of the woods a little bit let's talk about this platform as a whole uh, why do you feel this platform now that you've kind of gone through some, some of the main features um that dealers will really find a lot of success with this new platform well it's uh very flexible so like i said before you you're not limited to just one or two scenarios so how you can use it and we'll just isolate the dsp uh in here uh there's like i said it's kind of i call it the swiss army knife dsp because it has so many inputs and outputs and configurations and so many options of what you can do with it and it's a it's a really awesome just full system building all in one box uh and it's really hard to find something that it won't work in um uh, so it's it's uh, that's my favorite part about it. It's just the flexibility. It's like one SKU, yeah. one amp, yeah, right, and yep. like literally can put it into just about every situation. Whether yep. you're using an aftermarket radio, you're integrating into a high level, it doesn't matter. And you know what? You said the word future proof, but it's not only yep. future proof from a technology standpoint, Dan. I think it's also future proof from a system building standpoint. Like yes. you know what I mean? Let's say the customer you know went in with entry level speakers at first because he's like, oh, that was the budget at the time. Well, if you wanted to upgrade and swap that out or, and make more channels active or whatever the case may be, man, this yeah. this amplifier can do it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. So, yeah, for those that like to uh, have an upgrade path, mm -hmm. um, upgrade they can path. start with it. Yeah. So they can start with this and let's say down the road, they're like, all right, I'm ready for some more power. I want to run some external amps. They, they can just do it. They don't, you know, they can already have things right active and they can just build off of that. They can upgrade their speakers, whatever they want to do. It's, it's very flexible. So it's also transferable. Yeah. Like you could take this from one yeah. vehicle to another and do a completely different system setup, depending on that vehicle. Yes, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, let's get to know Dan a little bit as the builder, as the car audio enthusiast, obviously you've been building stereos for years. Uh, now with this tool, this amplifier, this new line, if this is in your whip, what would be your ideal setup using status gear? So I'm one of those guys that likes to have a lot of headroom and power, even though I don't listen to it loud. I like to uh, 
to have dynamic range. So my system would be, uh, I would use the DSP, obviously. <laughs> so um, the stat, I, my, my, my personal car is one of those cars where I cannot change the head unit. It's never going to happen. Um, so having, I would, I would integrate that and then add the status head unit as an, a, a better source um, and use the mix source feature, just like I showed you guys. So um, to where I don't even have to, you know, worry about much of changing or, you know, selecting sources, anything like that. And then uh, as far as the output side, uh, I think every car should have an active three-way front stage. Uh, every, everyone should have that. If you don't have, if you never had one, you need to get one and you'll understand why. Um, so active three way fronts and I would have a four channel amp per side just because like, so oh. and run because I like to have some power and I like to have some headroom and then, uh, and then just whatever sub stage from there. I normally go overkill on sub because I don't listen to bassy music, but I still like to have a good kick, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, and then we're going to have status amps and subs coming down the future. So it'll, you know, ideally. That's what I was wondering. That was my sub, next yeah. question because you're dropping like subs yeah. and stuff. And I noticed that so far we have components. We've got the integrated amplifier. We've got the source unit. That's what we have yep. so far, correct? Yep. And there'll be more coming down the road. All under yep. the status uh, brand. Yes. Or, or, yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. And if you liked how the F1 status system looks and you'll like how the status stuff. I'm curious to see what that sub is going to look like now that you mentioned yeah. it. So. And are you yep. saying there's going to be like mono amps as well to kind of accompany? Well, you heard it here first on CMA Networks, guys. Dan just 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 shook it. He didn't even say yes. He just did this. So we'll take that as a yup. We've, um, we've 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 announced the we've shown the full system picture. So by this it's point, cats out of the bag. Cats out of the bag on that one. Let's yeah. summarize it, Dan. Um, it's great mm -hmm. new technology. It's I know it's going to sound. I didn't get a chance to hear it, but I've heard people that I've talked to people who have listened to it. Everybody's like, "Wow, that was one amplifier." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so that took me. And these are like how can I say advanced listeners, let's call them advanced listeners that, you know, okay. peruse the show. You know who I'm talking about, right? That group of people. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, they were very impressed with the, the single amp setup, but the, also the precision mm -hmm. of the DSP, you know, they can hear, you know, how well that was tuned. I'm, I'm guessing mm -hmm. that was yourself that did that. So uh, good job on that. What do you hope dealers will appreciate most from this new platform? Um, I think a lot of it's the, like I said before, the flexibility, um, also the accessibility, uh, like I said before, the F1 status system is not going to be obtainable by everyone. So that, so status is kind of more for the masses. Uh, and, um, for example, I mean, that's what I can afford and I would have in my car. <laughs> so, um, and so that, though so that, and, uh, it's going to be more for, for everybody, you know, so it's, it's, uh, much more obtainable. Race on Sunday, yeah. sell on Monday. Exactly. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better yeah. myself. That's it right yeah. there. Uh, yeah. Dan, you got me, man. Great presentation. Thank you for walking us Thank through you. the new software. It's very exciting stuff. I can't wait to hear more examples. And uh, as time moves forward, that people get their hands on this stuff, put it in systems, and, and, and see what how creative people can be now that they have this platform to play with. Um, let's bring up some, some information here, guys. If you like what you see here, you want more information on Alpine, Definitely check out their website, alpine-usa.com is where you're going to find all the hardware specs. And whenever stuff becomes available, that's where it's going to be up. Your best source would be right there. If you're a Canadian dealer tuning in and you're like, yep, got to get me some Alpine. Well, get a hold of the folks at Gentech, gentech-intl.com. They are the Alpine Canadian distributor. On that note, Dan, thank you so much for coming in today and sharing with us all this great news and new platform, Alpine status. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fair enough. All right, guys, thanks for hanging with, hanging there with us for this uh, CMA workshop. Great job from Dan walking us through that new software. And if you're into DSP, which I imagine you are, if you're watching this, don't, don't go away. Keep it locked on CMA Networks. This is all about DSP in the month of July. It's the DSP sessions going straight through till Thursday, July 28th. Proud to say that we literally have every brand in DSP presenting. And that's how important this category is. I mean, if you're not doing DSP, if you're not putting it as a priority, I don't know what else to say. The whole month, just a DSP. Here's every opportunity you can to get a taste of what's going on in the industry. Um, and if you like more information or more videos on Alpine, for example, look, get to our website, cmanetworks.com. You can find great videos, hundreds to choose from. Search by your favorite brand, by category. Um, yes, yeah, so look DSP up. Look Alpine up. You'll find it there on cmanetworks.com. That's it. This is CMA Networks, CMA Workshop, presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time. We connect.
Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's left what? <laughs> Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?